Hi internet, I'm Udoka. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I am often talking about my own life and mental health and also my thoughts on practically everything. So if you vibe, subscribe. My voice starts out really soft. But as we get into this content today, I might just start screaming into this microphone. We are reacting to Trisha Paytas. If you didn't see part one, please check it out. I don't know if I'm post a link. I don't know. But, you know, you can go to my channel. You can find it. Because this is pretty funny. This TikTok page is called, what are you called? Contradictions of Trish. She contradicts herself a lot. Her... Her whole career was built on lying and over, over fantasticalizing her life. And it's just now that she is trying to become more of a, I don't know, more of a, a role model, a, a person of opinion one should listen to especially when she was trying to be woke, it backfired because people realized, oh, you're not actually woke. You actually, you actually, you know what I mean? Double, double. What you say is like double, double. So I think the last video we reacted to was this one. So let's just, you know, let's just see what's up, what's, what other contradictions are there to unfold? <laughs> Gabby Hanna messaged me immediately after Frenemies broke up trying to get on the podcast. I knew it would be an interesting show with lots of views to be had, but I didn't even respond to her and still haven't. Some things you just don't do. I would never do that to Trisha. <laughs> Have her on. We are in family, so he did show me something. I'm not gonna like say what it was because I don't wanna like put this on blast, but he did show me something. He's like, I would never do that to you. Like he showed me something that could have happened that didn't. I, do you know what I'm talking about? When he showed me that thing, he's like, oh, maybe you don't know, but he showed me something that like would have like devastated me, like really like hurt me. And he's like, I would never do that to you. Like, that meant a lot. I almost texted him just now. Anyways, it just meant a lot that like he didn't. It could have been just like an attack back and forth, but would have like devastated me, like really like hurt, really, hurt, me, hurt, me, hurt me. Have her on. Um, dude, if I had to deal with Trisha on a daily basis, I wouldn't, you can't make decisions based off of Trisha's emotions. Her emotions are like a roller coaster. She doesn't say what she means. She doesn't say what she feels. She doesn't mean what she says. She doesn't mean what she feels and it's just too confusing. Like you can't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm the type of person that I just have to just be myself. And, and if you, if you are not going to be consistent and constant and provide that sense of security, then I cannot base decisions off of you, you know, like it's too much. My initial video about Kimsa had nothing to do with Ethan. I never, I didn't mention Ethan in it. So let's get right into it. enemies number three. So just because I'm not on frenemies anymore, a lot of people think my voice isn't as loud, which it isn't, or it isn't as heard or as respected, which it isn't. So I'm making this video for other males, including Ethan Klein, including Ethan Klein, <laughs> to talk about these stories. One being Keemstar, who's like an internet troll and should not be named, but honestly, the situation's like really gross. I didn't mention Ethan in it. I mean, she does it a lot. She she's the, She's that person who'll be like, oh my God, I never said that. No, actually, you literally said it like five times. She's that kind of person. Your life is sad and pathetic. Have sad. fun trying to get pregnant. Donna Klein, she put... I'm sorry, that was so stupid. Like, that was when she was mad and she was like, have, have fun going to some beach hotel with Hila trying to get pregnant all weekend while you're eating um, room service. <laughs> It's like, thank you. <laughs> we will, we will. 
It's like, what is that supposed to mean? Like, I don't know. Like, what world is that, like, not a good time? Like, a beachfront hotel with your significant other having fun with room service? That sounds like my dream come true. Okay, what else did she say? Put blame and the weight of something so heavy on me. She's a vile. I have never met a more evil bitch. I would hide in embarrassment and shame after what she texted to Moses. Moses, if your sister has a miscarriage because of this stress, I will hold you and Trisha responsible. Stop this nonsense. Enough. Oh, you're perpetuating that this is a common reason for miscarriage and other people who miscarry will have that on them that oh maybe i was too stressed maybe it was this i kept taking tests and wasn't pregnant i was really sad that's another reason why i need to take like a break from reading comments because they really do think they stress me out like but even reading like negativity like it puts negative emotions in me like whether i'm consciously feeling them or not I just also don't want to add stress i found out i was pregnant things happen that caused me to miscarry i blame them the amount of stress your life is sad yeah, and pathetic. I mean, I don't think it's disgusting what Donna tweeted to Moses that if this stress causes Ela to miscarriage, I blame you. I don't think it's disgusting. I mean, this sounds like a family feud. It sounds like something you would say in a family feud. And, uh, you know, I don't blame Miss Donna. But I also see the people who are like, oh my gosh, that's a horrible thing to say to somebody. Well, you know what else is horrible? <laughs> what you're doing is also horrible. Like the whole drama that you're playing in is horrible. I It seems like Moses says and does stuff behind the scenes um, that like really riles up their family like I don't know what it is I don't have no screenshots or anything I just have you know when in front of me you just hear things you just say things that kind of imply what is Moses doing it's like what are you doing <laughs> um the way Trisha talked about that tweet I'm like girl you're so overdramatic it's one thing to hook up with people at such a big age difference, like that's so gross and nasty. But now you're hooking up with fans. If you're over 30, you have no business dating, hooking up with whatever you want to call it. This month is taking advantage of these fans who met at a show and just using them. There's something seriously wrong with these people. There's something seriously wrong with them, oh, really? seriously disturbed with them, that they so can't you would get never someone do their that, age. That, they don't want to get someone their age because they're so psychologically messed up, they're so stupid, they're so there's something so deeply disturbed, misogynist, or whatever the case is with this person. You can like it and enjoy it and be happy, and it's still wrong i'm happy to go on and have a discussion especially if it's something i feel very passionately about and obviously this age gap thing is but having, having discussions discussion with someone that you like just don't see eye to eye with that you think is an awful person but like it's important i just don't understand why you can't have a discussion with person i think discussions are important i'd like to have discussions with people especially about people i disagree with i like to have open discussions you know what's even heard this podcast which is so great even yesterday i was able to have debates and talking points i don't shy away from debate and discussion and I'll have those debates because you're happier in a new relationship. Yeah, now. Yes, she's yeah. right there. Look at it. Oh, yeah. She's not a child. Oh, oh my gosh, that's she's a real person. Oh, <laughs> that okay, anyways, but it wasn't meant to be. Everyone's like, "Wow, like you know, why are people so upset?" It's not. It's not meant to be that. It was just more like I'm commenting on something and it well, got blown we, up. We, yeah. and, Again, I, I don't think it's every relationship. I think it's like just my personal experience and people I know. But I mean, obviously, there's ones that do really well, and I hope it's forever. This is what a Me fake too. beat. Nah, this girl's so fake. Oh my god, this is why Gabby Hanna thought this. This this is the type of person. This is why Gabby Hanna thought they were friends. Then she switched it up and said, "Oh my gosh, we were never friends." she's she's a very fake um it's like she doesn't stand for anything no no trick it, this didn't this video didn't even show how she was on only fans with like her backup dancer i believe who was 19 or something like that um how are you gonna go you, she has been trying to slaughter this dude's name all over the internet, just so upset. 
that he was dating somebody under the age of 25. How are you going to go on the show and be like, oh, <laughs> I mean, basically saying, I wasn't really talking about you. I mean, I was just talking about my own self. I wasn't really talking about you. What a, oh, what a wimp, what a wimp, what a coward, what a, this is, ew, why does that disturb me so much? Like that, that, that really bothers me. That double take, that, that just flipped, that just 180, it bothers me. It's like, ew, it's like, ew, it's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, Ethan, do not ever, don't answer this person's phone calls. No, do not answer this person's phone calls. My going on mom's basement was not attacking Ethan. Ethan was like an asshole to me. Ethan. Ethan. Because Ethan's a pussy. Yeah. Ethan will not put himself in a situation where he knows he's going to lose. Oh, in that way, I think she has the Ethan syndrome a little, where it's like, if you can't admit to one fault that you that's did, what... Ethan has shit from years ago. There is a bruised picture of Moses. That's so fucking embarrassing, which Ethan brought to light. And that's where I'm at with Ethan right now. The fact that he can't admit that he did something wrong, in my opinion, was Ethan's fault. Like, that's why we didn't come back. He's such a dick in every other fucking <laughs> yeah. I agree. Like, he's definitely not an angel. But he's a walking, talking hypocrite. Oh, for sure. Did you file a strike against That's Ethan's That's so chance? crazy. And Trisha is not a walking, talking hypocrite. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Now, Keemstar, run that back. Run that back. Now, Keemstar is a, a deplorable. But the thing about Keemstar is he's like, I am a deplorable and I don't care. Okay? That's the thing about Keemstar. He has a consistent personality. Keemstar, now you know, Keemstar, you know you you wrong for that. How are you going to have the biggest hypocrite of the internet come on your show and you really just going to let her get, that's what I don't, that's actually, that's what I don't understand about Keemstar. How are you going to have Trisha Paytas on your show and you really just let her get away with that? Uh-uh, Keemstar. Keemstar is fake too. That must be why so many of these YouTubers are mad at him. Because maybe one day he was like, oh my gosh, I love your work. And the next day he's like, did so-and-so do such and such? Yeah, that's why they don't like him. That's why they don't like Keemstar. Because he switched it up for the camera. He switched it up for the camera. Mmm... And in that final episode of Frenemies, and this is my resentment for him that I'm going to hang on forever until, like, he can acknowledge that he misspoke. He misspoke on me. I have gotten so much hate, so much hate from that. I hate hearing her say that word. Oh, my God. I hate that word. They still being like, you ended Frenemies, the whole crew fired. It took him a whole 48 hours to make a video, a hit piece on me, lying, saying I wanted this whole crew fired. He lied about so many things or misunderstood, as he said in the final episode. So, like, lie, misunderstanding, whatever. Just put it out as a misunderstanding. I misunderstood the situation. I told Trisha <laughs> that people were upset that she didn't like the segment, okay? I take the blame for that. The reason they were upset that so I misunderstood what is she crying is because about she now? said she wanted to fire them all. They were always willing to do their job period trisha never explicitly said i want to fire the crew right what she did that's one thing that confused me in all of this because i remember watching this one where he where he says she never explicitly said she wanted to fire the crew she said do, 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 which implied to me firing the crew and i'm like why is she still why is she still barking about something that was he said he he said exactly what you wanted him to say. She did say is that I only hire fans. Oh, I know what she wanted. She wanted she wanted Ethan to say I apologize. It's all my fault. They're not professionals. She's not comfortable being with them. And if we're going to continue frenemies, we need a whole new staff. We need a whole new crew. Did she say, I want you to fire the crew? No, but like you did say that without explicitly saying, I want to fire the crew. This is my resentment form that I'm going to hang on forever. <laughs> okay, do that. No, you won't. You're going to forget about this in three months. Oh my God. Like you don't remember anything. You don't remember. You don't remember anything. So whatever. Um... I remember in part one, we saw, we listened to on her old podcast where 
she was saying, oh my gosh, we just need to fire everybody. Ethan's interns are horrible and this person is horrible. So nah, br- girl, no, y- you, it was probably very clear from your energy that you wanted to fire the whole crew. For all those people being like, well, Rylan had Jeffrey, you were mad about Jeffrey. I was mad about it. Did I say anything? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm not in a cult. Like, it was just so stupid. I told him the podcast thing was a big issue for me a lot. Take the f***ing dumb podcast down. That was so triggering to me, and I kept saying that, and he just kept brushing by. I was mad about it. Did I say anything? No, I'm not saying anything. I don't want to throw him under the bus, but you that's never why when I saw, anything. like, Shane and Rylan promoting Jeffrey, like, as if he's a god on this podcast. This is an evil person. He knew this triggered me why back then. Crying? It triggers me now. God, it sucks. Now, so, yeah, people... I now have haters, um, and the, the haters who hate on me, they don't like me because I don't just automatically sympathize with a woman who's tearing up. Um, no, I don't like sometimes people on the internet are tearing up for show or tearing up for something that's stupid like sometimes sometimes somebody's behaving like a Karen and Karen's cry I don't need you don't need to have sympathy for every type of tears you can have discernment sucks for somebody's like oh my gosh you're so insensitive but I'm a little baby about it well she was a little baby about it kind of right with the those tears it was not attacking Ethan saying that I look like a WWE wrestler I love is this the same video James Charles actual P word have resentment towards Ethan and that but this I started this furthermore there's a I think Ethan like we did with Jeff I'm not ready in contact deep Ethan sad I was evil monster on Tana's podcast thank you Ethan fuck you Ethan you are a piece of shit it's absolutely crazy I don't want to drag this out 51 responses to my one tweet and I'm the one that can't drop it all those people being like, well, Rylan had Jeffrey. You were mad about Yep, that's what I can. People are like, Ethan needs to stop it. Ethan knows he can stop it because Trisha's unhinged. And Ethan, if you just stop responding, F that. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. You have the right to defend yourself against a lunatic. You do. You do. And instead of worrying about the person who responds appropriately, why don't y'all worry about the person who behaves erratically? 51 tweets to his one response to clarify a lie that she said. No, it it gives. Why don't you leave her alone from the Victoria's Secret, Karen? And you filming you said, let me get all of this on film because I know this trick finna call the police. And when she do, I want them to, I don't want no lies on my name and everyone around you. Just, just stop filming her. Just ignore her. Why don't you just leave? Excuse you. No. Why do, why do I have to leave? Because somebody want to act crazy. Why don't we remove the crazy? Like, no, 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 no. I'm just so against this coddling of of loonies no i i don't understand this this by the way if you want to coddle them you can coddle them but coddling at the expense of the victim no that's not that's what we're not gonna do if you want to hold her hand go ahead hold her hand if you want to ignore go ahead and ignore but we're not finna tell the victim to just not defend themselves. I think that's so wrong. I hate it. Anyone under 25, they just can't do. Let me not say so wrong. Like, I understand the logic. But some of us don't play that game. Now, some of us don't let people just lie on our good name. Nope. Do casual hookups. It's like, don't with people under 25 if you're over 30 just don't leave that for people under 25 under 25 people can f- under 25 people like let them have that moment i truly truly believe with all my heart those fundamental years of 16 to 24 you're not mentally developed i don't care what anyone f-ing says i don't care how woke you are whatever <laughs> and 32 he's 23 which is officially the youngest guy i've ever been with after being with a 23 year old there's a lot to be girl. said for 
young men and stamina. Because I know a lot of How do you take yourself power seriously? Play, the power position, which is a huge thing onto its own when you're older, richer, and more successful. Wait till you're 25 to know that you really want to do sex work. If you're still young at 25, you may regret it. If you're under the age of 25, don't you only? Fan? I agree though. What a collab. Oh my god. Imagine. Yes. Uh, I want to <laughs> Trisha so bad. Like, imagine if we <laughs> down. I really do want to. See, Trisha do don't stand for brain. nothing. I don't know. You have to. I'm she just, like, literally stand stands for nothing. nothing. You may regret it. It's like in the heat, in the moment of. It's maybe. I think she's just fake. I think she's just fake. I think when she's home alone or when she's with like actual friend, like at that time, Ethan was an actual friend. Her, the true her is coming out and it feels real. But then she goes someplace and it's like, that's the exact opposite of what you were saying the other day. And I think what it is, is like when she's with these other people, when she's on Kim Star's show, it's not Trisha. It's not Trisha there. It's like a fake. It's a mask. It's a fake. On, on, what's her face? Tana Mojo. It's not Trisha there. It's a fake. When she was tweeting, chatting with Gabby Hanna, oh my gosh, I miss you. How come every time we're at a party, we never get to see each other? It's a fake. It's a fake. Damn. For those who don't know, Tana Mojo is like, what, 21, 22? Yeah, so, you know, how is Trisha going to say, you shouldn't do relations work if you're under 25. But then she goes on the show of a 22 year old who's like, oh my gosh, we should get on OnlyFans together. And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah. I think there's a, mm, maybe that's why she thinks she had DID or multiple personalities. It's not that you have multiple personalities, Trisha. It's that you, you, you are fake. You have, I don't know. You feel like you can't be yourself in front of other people. And she doesn't actually know who herself is, too. So that's really hard for her to even figure out. Mm, I think we're getting some, I think we're understanding the psyche. I think we're understanding better. This mind. And it's like an ugly side of being manic. The manic episode. Um, one you didn't see was the reason my boyfriend blocked me a year and a half ago, um, which ultimately was the best for both of us. I got high on on my birthday. Demanded he talk to me, and when he said he wasn't gonna see me on my birthday and go to sleep, I drove over to his house, super high, crashed into his house, banged on all the doors, jumped into his pool naked, kicked and screamed through every window of the house. He got so scared oh. after three hours, he left, and I chased him in my car to follow him and got in a car accident. I oh my god! And waited for People are telling me I need to calm down. And oh, what did I do? Calm down. I'm sorry. I just had to pause I like that. I had to pause that. Oh my God. I would have called the police. Did he call the police? I would have called the police. Oh my God. Shoot. If he didn't call the police. Oh Lord Jesus. If it were me, I would have called the police or I would have brought a. Ch -ch -ch. Bruh. And that's. And that's scary. You don't want to do, you don't want to do that to somebody that you know, you know? I mean, oh, that is scary. Now I'm speaking as a woman. My partner has told me I have woman brain. Like I view life as a woman. So there's situations where I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to do this, do that. And he's like, oh my gosh, babe, I'm a dude. Like dudes don't think about that. Dudes aren't just scared of that. So I don't know, maybe him as a guy and also they dated. So maybe he feels he knows her or I don't know. I don't know. But on the other hand, he says that he has PTSD from these events. I don't blame him. I would be so scared, bro. <laughs> Who that is a, mm -hmm. that is an ex-girlfriend for sure. That is, that is, um, until he finds another the one, you know what I mean? Another woman to spend the rest of his life with. From now on, when he's dating, that's that's a story. That's going to be the late night snuggling. And the new girlfriend's like, come on, babe. What's wrong? And he's going to be like, oh, I 
just, I just want to be sure, you know, I had an ex once who, you know, is she's, Trish is going to be that story. <laughs> Trish is going to be that story of, well, <laughs> damn. Was super high, crashed into mm -hmm, his house, girl. banged on all the doors, no, jumped into his pool, and was so scared after I three hours, again. got in a car accident. That's scary. I begged and pleaded for Jason to be my friend, to talk to me, for David to talk to me. I begged for David to talk to me for a year and a half no. because I was like, what? I need to know how these, how, how, mm -mm. how did these dudes not come out? When Trisha was blasting David Dobrik and blasting Jason, how did they keep their mouth shut? I couldn't do it. 100%. I'm, I would be exactly, exactly like Ethan. I would be like that. Shit, I will be nine months pregnant about to break water. And I will be like, you want some beat? <laughs> I'd be like, you think I'm scared? <laughs> you think I'm scared? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm playing and I'm just saying... How did he keep his mouth shut? I would be so infuriated. What the hell did I do wrong? He really blocked me after my second mental hospital stay. Said I'm stalking and harassing them, which I've never texted them or anything like that. And I was just like, really? Like, why would I call you back? I thought I'm stalking and harassing you. Keeping up with the vlog squad. How does that make you feel that she's spying on on them? He used to catch me now. Of course, she spies. She, Whenever she hurts somebody, she's spying on them to make sure they're not they're not announcing to the world that she hurt them. Open about it. And it is like an ugly side of being a man. People are telling me I need to calm down and if you don't want to calm down, the lady comes back and she goes, we are going to hold you. We're, um, we're putting you in an involuntary hold as if you want to feed. I'm like, no, 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 I want, I didn't want to be locked away. I didn't want to be with crazy people. I didn't want that on my record forever. I didn't want that. Like, I don't, I don't think you could adopt. Not that it matters, but you can't like own guns and not that I would anyways. Any reality show, if you're 5150, you're not allowed on. I'm never going to do reality TV again. And I'm like, this is something that's just on my record. And this is something like, no, no, no. So my immediate reaction, I got up and ran. They showed up to the hospital, the Cedar sinai before going to a mental hospital. And then they admitted to me a mental hospital. As soon as they came, I tried to run off the stretcher. David and Jason were both back there in the hallway of Cedar sinai But as soon as David got back there, I took out all my clothes and made a run for it outside the hospital. And they took me and they gave me, um, they sedated me. Yeah. And then they told me I had to go to a mental hospital. You needed I saw to be him and I like, freaked out and I ran. Yeah, but you needed. I don't know if this is a contradiction. I think, I think. What she's saying here while she's sad and what she said on the front of me can both be happening. I don't know. I might be missing something. But, um, girl, yeah, you needed to be 5150. And that should have been a sign that you need, like, serious. Like, I really wish Trisha would just go to a rehab facility. Like, go to, go to some you know, mansion where they just make you eat healthy and do yoga and you do group therapy and you have one-on-one -on -one therapy and you know, you're, you get properly diagnosed and you start on medications and you're just away from all the stress. You're not allowed on social media, you know, like go to one of those places and stay there for a few months. I wish she would. How do you not? I don't know. If I were 5150, I mean, I'm not Trisha, so it doesn't matter what I would do. Because I know what I would do, because I'm doing what I would do. Once things got so bad. You're like, I, got, I need help. I don't know. That's crazy. I have this impending sense of doom, an impending sense of doom that something is always going to be found out about me. That's I've always been vocal telling. on social media because I was silenced <laughs> at my school growing up. I had three different incidences with three different teachers. The one that I was too scared to speak up on, someone else spoke up years later and he ended up getting arrested. Byron, Illinois, his name was Mr. For looking up CP at school. Look it up. If you've ever wanted the real Trisha, I am nothing but honest in this book. Nothing illegal happened to my teachers ever. <laughs> Little naughty Trisha definitely was like into my teachers.
sabotaging my weight loss my entire life, never wanting to lose weight. I wanted to be an actor. Recently diagnosed twice as schizophrenic. That, that is not what you have. I'm hearing your voices. I'm schizophrenic. Check. I am, in fact, not. And a lot of people have been saying that. So, like, I have this impending sense of doom. Something is always going to be found out about me. I have this impending. Yeah. So this video is about her essay accusations, which... Every time she tells the story, there's details changed in the story, which makes people feel like, so what happened? Well, what's the truth? And, and then she lied about her diagnoses. Yeah, I remember when she first came on front of me and she was like, oh my gosh, everybody thinks I have BPD. Like everybody keeps saying I have BPD, but actually have schizophrenia. I'm just like, no. <laughs> I'm like, mm, mm If there's schizophrenia involved, then it might be schizoaffective disorder. But there's no there is no way in hell you are not uh comorbid. That means more than one diagnosis. There's no way you only have one diagnosis and it's schizophrenia. Ain't no way I'm a fo Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Young teacher, the subject of schoolgirl fantasy. She wants him so badly. How to seduce your teacher. So I was always a little seductive. By the way, that song that she was singing... I saw the video of her dancing to that song in an outfit like this. Um, it was interesting. Back in the day, if you actually want to seduce your teacher, there is a few things that you should do. One, I giggled a lot. I think giggling schoolgirls are the cutest little thing ever, especially when you are young. I love to giggle. I think I giggled all the way up until, well, literally last week when I was looking at the community colleges. I was like, oh, really? Yeah, giggling just always works in general for seducing anyone. We had heart rate monitors, and I always was like, I don't know how to get my heart rate monitor on. Could you help me, Mr. Before borrowing something's always good, whether I borrowed a DVD, which was a whatever, but if you need to borrow something for research, oh, can I borrow a textbook? Can I borrow this book to take home so I can read more about it? Borrowing things means you have to give it back eventually, meaning you have to see him an extra time, and that's always a score. Asking to be tutored, that was my favorite thing today. I just be like, is there a way I can just get extra credit, like maybe help you out after school, set up for the math fair? So back in the day, I had crushes on all my teachers. Sent me from fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher, Mr. I was in love with and I passed that one time and he carried me to the nurse's office after we had our hepatitis B shot. Mm. Sexual. Saying hi wow. every time you see him also helps him remember <laughs> I like you and sort of give you that flirtatiousness. It's that flirtatiousness you can get away with without having it to be so obvious that you want to sit on him. So every time I would see him, he's with other teachers or other students. I just have a tight little yeah. body and I'll just gross. Yeah, so this came out how to seduce your teacher. I'll give the benefit of um, when this was posted because it was during that time in YouTube where like you really were trying to be outrageous. Like this is the same era of YouTube where Shane Dawson is painting um, his face. Um, so, you know, I give that benefit of the doubt. Um, honestly, this doesn't outrage me. Um, <laughs> but I understand why it would like, the, yeah, maybe there is some kid who's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do these things. Even though this video is supposed to kind of be a joke, but there are, there is going to be some kid. I mean, I know if I was in high school, I would watch this and I would be like, it's, I know she's joking, but also these are good, these are good tips. No, I get why people are mad. And then on, and then, but also people are trying to use this as evidence that she was never essayed. This is not evidence that she wasn't essayed. Like I, mm, the narrative people are, speaking I, I don't want to get into it I don't want to get into it I just want to say that having fantasies about teachers does not mean you weren't like if you've been essayed it doesn't mean you lose that part of you 
oftentimes things like this is a sign something happened. And just the amount, like how much Trisha back then and today talks about relations. Um, she used to talk about like the most shocking type of relations and kinks. And she was just so hyper-focused on it. You know, even in, in front of me, she was so hyper-focused on discussing what she would do to Ethan. You know what I mean? Like people like that, it's, um, you, they, they were essay. People who are like that were essay. So I don't like people using this as evidence that she wasn't because this actually might be evidence that maybe she was. There was one show I was too mentally ill for. They took a test and I guess because it had to do with celebrities and we went on simply to get money. It was number one hater and they were looking for number one haters and they had the list of people you could be a hater for. And one of the people was Scott Disick and it was all booked and everything, but we had to get these tests done beforehand. This was the first time I remember answering this and not knowing that it wasn't um normal. I did the test. It was like fill in the bubbles and they called me back and they're like, oh, you filled in the bubble of, you know, you see shapes that aren't there. And I'm like, yeah. And I see animals that aren't there. This was like my first sign of that where I, and I, I chalked it up as they all thought I said, but I said, yeah. And they're like, okay, we can't have you on the show. And I was like, what? Wow. Okay. So that was like my first sign of like crazy, I guess you could say. I failed an AB test one time for a reality show. I just randomly did it. I randomly filled out an AB test for the show we did with Scott Disick. And I failed because I said I saw like shapes or shifts or, or like something like that. And they like told me I like can't be on the show because I was like mentally insane. <laughs> but it was randomly filled out. There was one show I was too many. Oh my God. She's what a performer. No. Wow. I don't know. Um, yeah, she hates her life. She thinks she has to, she takes any little tidbit of her life and just blows it up into some. So let me tell you something crazy that happened. Mm. my entire life like never wanting to lose weight like i talked to therapists about it i like having extra weight because it turns off a lot of men and that's the truth of it the only way the more shop when i was a kid was when i started gaining weight i just kept gaining weight because i thought it would turn men off for me and i still feel that way i have so many reasons to just lose some weight attention <laughs> when i was a child like i i wanted to be an accident i wouldn't eat all week i'd have two slim fasts today i'd have one in the morning one at night that was it and my teachers are like oh my god like you're losing so much weight and it felt fucking phenomenal. Like, I felt so cool. I was like, wow. You know, when she was talking about how she gained weight to to not get attention, I feel like she learned that, like, in some DBT class or some book she read. She read about that. And she was like, oh, I'm, I'm the mental health chick. That, that would be a good, that would be a good talking point. That would be good for a next video. I'm more... But, you know, who knows what to believe with Trisha? I mean, maybe she was talking about different times in her childhood. Who knows? It was, it was everything. Or like, maybe oh, she's yeah. just I did these things called wine in fast. general. I only drank water for five days. Dieting, long-term dieting, you know, binging is, is that. My binge eating disorder, taking diet pills at an early age. Anything I can, quick and lose weight fast. I'm being as honest and transparent as I can be. That's funny because at school, I wouldn't eat lunch. I wouldn't, and people would think it was so weird. And I did this from middle school mm -hmm. all the way through my senior year in high school. Yeah, because not just in those two clips, but I think in her book and some other videos, she talks about how she hated how big she was and she thought she was fat and she was always trying to lose weight. So no, I think when she's talking about, oh, I gained weight to, to get men's attention away from me. I think she just read that in a book. I really think she just read that in a book because that is, that is something we talk about um, sometimes in therapy um, that sometimes people, especially women, especially young women, gain weight as a cushion, as a safety to protect themselves. I think she, I think she just heard about it and was like, oh my gosh, that sounds, that's a great explanation for why I'm not at the weight I want to be at.
What was your bad experience in London? We went over to go see Michael Jackson in London. Um, and it was just a really bad experience in the sense that we never actually got to see Michael Jackson. And we got a tip where he was going to be. And I wanted to go so bad. And the whole reason we went on the trip, my dad paid for it all, was for me to go see Michael Jackson and hopefully, you know, get to talk to him or have a picture with him. I was so disappointed that I was not allowed to go. And we just ended up sitting in the room for the rest of that day. And we couldn't go see him. And the third day was like a Sony, like, protest thing. And something, again, that I wanted to go. Another reason I wanted to go over there. And I couldn't go to that. And then also too, I got to go to London when I was 13. That was the time when Michael was like anti-Sony, and so we got to like see him perform. We went to a tribute show, got a Michael Jackson doll, camped outside his hotel with everyone else. It was really, really cool, and like, yeah, I got to like hug him, and he was awesome. Like, I loved Michael Jackson, and that's why it was so sad for me like a couple years ago when he died. It like made me so, so sad, because I absolutely loved Michael Jackson. And those were probably like some of my most memorable moments from childhood. They all had to center around him. And Michael Jackson, I really Michael loved. Jackson used to spend a lot of time sitting out in front of his house. <laughs> my dad would drive me up when I'd come out to visit. I would skip school sometimes and come out to California, and my dad would like drive me up to Michael Jackson's house, and we'd just sit outside for like ever. One time, we met this girl outside the gate too. She was like me. She was just sitting out there with her dad. And my dad got us like a plane to like fly over Michael Jackson's house and like look at it. it was wow. <laughs> what did you talk to Michael Jackson about? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I had the moonwalk book and I was with no, my girl. dad. She's laughing because she <laughs> she had to think of the lie. Dad. And I just said that I was like in love with him. I was like, I want to marry you. I said that to Michael Jackson and he just said, That's a he just lie. Asked yeah. me, like, you can tell she's lying right here. Like, <laughs> really <laughs> bad. Nothing weird, nothing Wait. weird, nothing. Really like bad. Are y'all starting to pick out? You can kind of start. I don't know. You can kind of tell sometimes when she's just flat out oh, lying. Okay, hold on, hold on. So you go, hold on. I'm a girl. You can tell. Wait, wait. You're with your your dad. You Does tell. he invite both of you back to the house? Yes. Okay. We're in. We're like in front of the gate. We're already at the house. We're like parked on the street. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Typical. Yes. <laughs> so he invites the two of you in. Do you walk with him from the gate to the house? Do you drive? You drive. In? You drive. You get your pass. You drive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Honestly, oh my, my experience gosh. was really positive. Like she there was, was a, a really bad liar here. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Michael Jackson died before I could meet him. Her lips look good there. What was your bad experience in London? I don't know what she's doing for lips now, but she needs to fire whoever that is because they are, I don't know what it's doing. It's like, I don't know if it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's like doing some, it's putting an indention in her lip. So she needs to go back to whoever used to be doing it. But yeah, that was interesting. We could tell that she was lying. I saw TikTok of this amazing artist named Inky Witch. I actually met her ironically. Jesus, Zach, what the fuck? I'm sorry, bro. That made me laugh. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. <laughs> what the fuck that was wrong with you? <laughs> that was, <laughs> uh, that that was, was so a funny. That was a That's funny moment. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm sorry. They, they that was funny. Got a highlight from a show last yesterday where they put a clip from a time when he was coming for me, like exposing me. And Zach played a soundbite like "Shut up, bitch," and everyone's like laughing. And they even knew in the moment like this is like not appropriate. Like it's it's really to me it's like internalized misogyny. I just don't want to deal with it. I can't. No, 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 no. It's not internalized misogyny when you're mad at Hila for having relations with her husband and getting pregnant by him. That's not internalized misogyny. When you storm off the set because you were fighting about that, that's not internalized misogyny. But this one is. Now, if it's because they use the word, you know, the B word, um, I could see that. But also... Because you're the one saying it. No, you know you you know you don't you don't think the B word is a misogynistic word. You don't. If somebody watching thinks it's a misogynistic word, I completely understand. Actually, I kind of think it is too. Um, but I also just accept that we live in a world where nobody's thinking about that or caring about that. And the thing is, Trisha, neither do you. You don't think or care about that. So that made me mad that I don't like, I don't like when people bring, I don't like when people try to bring wokeness when they not woke. I don't like it. It, it bothers me. It. Go with it. And then like, cause that, just, it just ignites so much hate, so much just absolute lies. And just, it's, it really, it really. Like your me. lies. Like it brought up your life that's how the world is like that now it's like you can't call but it, it does but, but if they're a bitch they're a bitch it holds no merit to me i throw that word around like 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not like whatever. Ever, like, Does I anyone like else feel that way? A bitch, so. I mean, I don't want to be a baby about it, but I do. I just, I don't feel comfortable. I think you're a baby about it. I think really? you're becoming the woke. If they're a bitch, they're a bitch. Natalie Noel. Let's stick with this little bitch first. And then she is. She just says, this person is that. A thousand percent that she's a little bitch. Little bitch. She's a little bitch. What oh, you're doing is you're causing no. problems in their family. That's so not true. And that's fucked up. You told and she's, this. she doesn't no want any more of that. Excuses. It's like, what the? Who the fuck are you, bitch? Say what? Don't talk. No, I can't believe. I can't, bruh. That is so. Mm-mm. This got me hot in the last video. How dare you and. Ins- how dare you insult his wife in front of him? That is just so, like, that's why I was saying in, the, in part one, I was saying if I was Ela, I would have I would have shut it down a long, a long ass time ago. I would have shut it down. Oh, Whew, that makes me really hot. That just makes me so hot. I don't know. That, that level of disrespecting a relationship. It, mm. Oh, that makes me hot. I can't believe that. She said, who do you think you are? She is Moses' sister. She's known him her entire life. You've known him for maybe three months at that time? We're cutting this part out. She doesn't want to be talked about. That's fucking crazy. What's on her lip? Oh, okay. She's too fucking good for this podcast. Cool. Love that. Bitch, like, why are you shit. so I'm jealous? Because it's of how gross. I'm not laughing. Anyway, it's amazing. I, I just identify with Ethan. Like, I'm not gonna be the one to say should have be weird, but, <laughs> but with the right timing and <laughs> voice, um, and just the situation going on, I would have, I would have. <laughs> I just was like, I would have been so laughing. to make to just ask you just to stop because it is such a big fan base and it's full of hatred and it's really it's really dark hatred it's so scary that the harassment is so scary i watched a show and you are fucking fake after we have these conversations i will go on youtube and i will fucking talk about you so much and say how much of an asshole you are and if i watch this back just know that i have a voice on fucking youtube and guess what your instagram will have to be shut down every boyfriend i've ever had has had to shut their instagram down from the hate comments every single one of them you know everyone's wondering so why proud. i've stayed off social media the reason why is because the past two months has been hell all the hate messages and the bashing when none of you even know who i am I've always been there for Trisha Paytas from day one. I've been there through everything. The ups and downs with blasting our relationship online. Me and Trisha were friends. I fucking stood by her time and time again. I've had people wish my death. I've had people threaten me. I had people wish death on my mom so she wouldn't have to live with a freak like me for a son. I was really hurt. I was mortified in Mm. front of thousands of people. I was made fun of. I don't even know why. I don't know what I did to deserve this. This hurt a lot more. What I went through with Trisha. And I'm so sick of people asking all these years later. Now, I I don't know. With Nick Accato, Avocado, that drama is so old, okay? Um, That I don't know why people were bringing it back up again. I think people were bringing up that drama again. And what the drama was, was he he played the violin or something. He played one of her songs. Trisha said, I love it. Trisha asked if he wanted to collab. He said, I would love to. I'm flying out there. I'm flying to the U.S. because I think he's from South America. I'm flying there. Let's meet up. She said, yes, let's do it. When are you coming? Oh, I'm coming on this day. Then that day came. He's like, hey, I'm here. I'm waiting. I have like, are we going to do this? Hello, are you there? And she just ghosted him. Then she went on a rampage like, oh, my gosh, that guy's just so insane. We never I never spoke to him. You know, lying that she does. So at the time, it was. I mean, yeah, Trisha sent her stance out to him. But with Nick, but the thing about Nick Akato is he also loves the drama, dramatics. He loves the dramatics. He, I feel like he gained weight for YouTube for the spectacle to be spectated at. So I don't know if these tears are real tears. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But I agree what happened to him that was so unwarranted. And it, and it was Trisha's fault. But I don't know, like, I just wanted to give that asterisk that the tears may not be, (laughs) I don't know about the tears. 
I'm gonna be real. Bring she's a liar. Up. And she's manipulative. Please, whatever you do, don't- I think, I think he was just taking advantage of people realizing Trisha's not a good person and Trisha lies on people. I think he was just taking advantage of that. That's that's why I don't think the, the tears were real. But when it actually was happening, the, those tears were real. Don't let Trisha Paytas know that you know me. The minute she knows that you know me, she's going to find a way to manipulate a situation. She understands the power she has on YouTube. She knows that she can literally destroy someone's inner soul with her YouTube channel. I don't want to have any mm -hmm. ties with her. She lied about me. And I got all this hate and all this backlash. That's not true. That is a lie. It just really hurts me because it's uh, a ding in my character. You know what I'm saying? That didn't even happen. I'm just going to say, Trisha Paytas, this like, you have your sad. own problems. Please stop worrying about mine. Please stop talking about me. Like, not how is Trisha Paytas going to be talking about, we need to leave minors alone and da -da 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 -da, and then you are attacking A minor nonstop because she doesn't, she doesn't want to eat snails. Are you out of your mind? This one made me so upset when it was happening. You can't say keep my name out of your mouth when your whole career and livelihood is based on Look social media. It's a bit much to okay. be even, you know. But we have to keep you, Trisha out of our mouths. Oh, shitting on a 16-year-old girl. First of all, I couldn't care less. Like, I couldn't care oh, yeah. less. It's so guess what? We don't care about you. AB's a great guy. People were sending him death threats and, like, harassing him. I get death him. threats every day. You put yourself online. Don't be on camera. Don't have your own YouTube channel. She was texting me already planning her video. She was like, well, I'm going to post this video. Like, I wasn't even done with the relationship. This constant loop of, like, wait a minute, but what about this? And it's, like, seriously. So now we don't like Gabby Hanna here because Gabby, ugh. She lies by omission, but there are a lot of things I actually can defend Gabby about. Listen, I don't have to like, this is what I was trying to tell those people who are mad at me for being like, actually, I disagree with Mysterious T about something. What you have to understand is you don't have to like somebody to use logic. And now when there's... And know when somebody who's beloved could actually do something better and somebody who's hated actually is deserving of defense. And with this Trisha thing, I think Gabby was naive. <laughs> you know, Gabby is, it's a little much, okay? Like, it's like, girl, can you let it go type of thing? But um, Trisha was lying on her name and just, Trisha was took advantage of the Gabby hate train and just kept lying on this girl. And that I know that hurts Gabby a lot. Like Gabby is very emotional, but that is going to make her cry like this. I believe these are real tears. It's going to make if you lying on Gabby continuously like that and everybody believes your lie, she going to cry. So fucking intense, dude. Anger like on behalf of Trisha. She, but Gabby cries. When people tell the truth <laughs> about the situation, she crying. So she's definitely going to be beside herself if you're lying on her name. Uh, trying to dox me, threatening me, uh, making fun of how I looked. They were talking about how I was a diversity hire at BuzzFeed. This is a person oh, that's so who rude. I considered, Christmas. you know, family, a close friend. Someone I trusted. I really feel like she tried to ruin my life. Please, you guys, stop. It is honestly ruining our family. I, I please need you guys to stop. If someone asks me, I stop. No, you don't. I Dude, oh, she's so anchoring. What's your craziest sex? Like this so it's the bottom portion of this lamp, yeah. like right here, far? this part. Okay, what happened? I mean, I just had that ass one time and I got stitches from it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's like crazy though. I'm like that's why I can't have ass. Like I got stitched up, my butthole was like tight. Oh yeah, did you ever see my video about my bloody butt? The ant <laughs> bleeding and I had to get mm. stitched back up. If you don't poop enough, like you're supposed to get a stool, stool softener. B trick, you was constipated. <laughs> But in her, I, I will say she may have just said that because, you know, it's the David Dobrik blogs and they're just crazy zany. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't, I don't take anything that happens in the Dobrik blog seriously, but that's funny. You were constipated. I had to get stitches on it. I have 
have been having rectal bleeding slightly. It was not drops of blood. It was like I would, after releasing stool, I would wipe and there would this be just is a TMI. little blood. And it almost felt like a razor cut in there. Ooh. You know, a lot of you might think, oh my gosh, too much anx trash, but no, I never even had anx in my life. <laughs> kind of as the result of that or just genetics. Um, I have a very tiny little, tiny little. No, 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 you don't have a tiny little. Ooh, gross. Let me just insert some knowledge. You don't have a tiny little thing. Your your anus can actually open up. Um, <laughs> okay, I, you don't need to know how large it can open up, but you were constipated and you had hard stools. And um, <clears throat> yeah, you need to exercise, drink fluids, um, increase your fiber intake. And really, it's really important for your mental health. Like, if you have mental health issues, you need to be going regularly. Incre increase your intake of minerals. Take some magnesium, you know what I'm saying? Butthole, I guess you would say. So sometimes uh, when you pass large amounts mm -mm, of stuff, mm -mm. Um, or heal rather, um, let's not know. We don't need any more medical misinformation. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. Sorry if this is like really random. I just thought, you know, maybe if it helped me, maybe it'll help you and set your mind at ease and don't be embarrassed about it because I'm only 26 and I was like, why am I bleeding from my butt? What's your craziest sex story? It's like this thing. So it's the bottom portion of the oh, lamp. Yeah. Like right but here. Anyway, that's, okay, that's just happened? funny. I mean, I just had that. That's, that's just funny. I think, I just, I feel like that, that candlestick thing is a, is a bit, but for the show, but that was the last one, guys. Was it? Yeah, that was the last one. When did they post that? What's your craziest sex ago? story? It's like this thing. So it's the bottom. So um, what what do you think of all of these contradictions that we went through? I, it actually has been quite enlightening for me. Um, you know, when we're thinking about Trisha... And, you know, maybe when we think about people in our own lives who who are like this, um, I feel like Trisha does not like herself. I don't think she likes herself or or her life, one or the other, or maybe both. And I don't think she knows herself. I think we get the real Trisha in little glimpses and pieces and moments. And then... Most of the time, we're getting a facade, Trisha, a fake Trisha. So that's why she's always, she'll say, I believe this, and then do the opposite, like, all the time. It's because she's she's not her. She's not an authentic person. Um, And what's interesting is, I don't know, like, in this one, we could tell she was lying. Like, we could tell. Like, we can hear in the voice. We could see in her body language that she is lying. That was crazy to me. That made me feel like, oh, I want to, you know, rewatch when I'm bored and just see. Ooh, can I tell? Can I spot the lie? Actually, you know what? I want a body language person. Has a body language person analyzed Trisha? Hold on. I'm subscribed to all of these body language channels. Body language Trisha. Uh, <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting to me. <clears throat> What's most important to her is protecting the little sense of self that she has. That's why she sends people to attack. That's why she threatens people. That's why, I mean... For Trisha, this is her world and we're all just living in it. But yeah, I hope one day she gets the help that she needs. In the meantime, don't answer her phone calls. No, don't answer her phone calls. Even if she's in a great mood and she's being just so sweet and fun, just don't do it. Like, I wouldn't, don't dance with the devil. Don't entertain it. You know, Tana Mojo had her on the show. I would say don't do that. You know, Tana Mojo's trying to, you know, be on a different path. Tana Mojo's trying to, you know, get her life right. And Trisha is one of those people, like, if if I met Trisha at a party today, I would be like, oh, my God, I love this girl. Like, I'll be like, oh, my God, let's, 
Like, let's just have so much fun. And I've known people like, I've known people like that, her. And you want to be her friend. But, you know, then you, then you realize the truth. And it's like, ugh. So, you know, I'm like, mm, Tana. I was like, Tana, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't open up your door to, to, to a monster you don't want to fight. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I couldn't do it. Maybe some people can handle it. I can't. Mm-mm. I can't do it. Mm. Now, before I wrap up, can you let me know in the comments, should I go work out or not? I'm really tired. I'm trying to get more sleep, working on it, but I'm so tired. And a part of me just feels like I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to this dance class. And another part of me is like, but you're really going to like it. You love dance. Um, it'll be your cardio for the day. You know, we committed to doing cardio every day. But I'm just so tired. I was so excited to make this video, but I'm not excited to exert physical energy. Oh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, like it. Subscribe if you vibed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.